from the Charlotte Motor Speedway, just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, Oldsmobile presents the Winston. This is NASCAR's race of all stars, a race designed only for winners. 19 of the qualifying positions are already determined by men who have most recently won in Winston Cup racing. This man, Dale Jarrett, number 21, could be the 20th and final qualifier. We are in the closing laps, the final third of the Winston Open. It is the final race that sets the stage for the Winston itself. It is NASCAR's all-star race. Winners only. So if things don't change at the moment, the number 21 car, and that is Dale Jarrett, will move into the 20th starting position in the Winston Open itself. Here are the standings right now with 86 laps complete. Jarrett being chased by the early leader and pole position winner, Ernie Irvin, then Sterling Marlin, who has worked his way in to the Winston the last two years in a row. But right now, Dale Jarrett is looking as a very, very good bet. But there are several cars ready to contest his lead. Just behind him and chasing him down right now is Ernie Irvin. And just behind Ernie is Sterling Marlin in the 94 car. That's the fight for second place. Second and third chasing down the leader. The last position for the Oak Winston itself will be filled here. Now, it's been a race that's been absolutely packed with excitement. In the early going, Ernie Irvin was out in front. Chad Little moved up to take the lead. Greg Sachs was running high on the course alongside Irvin about 15 laps ago when suddenly the tire went flat, and that sent Greg Sachs into the wall. He ricocheted off. Fortunately, it did not appear to be that he was injured, but the car certainly flattened on one side. That's one view of that. It was in the middle of a nice little battle for third place. Looking at it another direction, you see the tire goes down. The car takes a turn out to the right and up into the wall. And that put Greg Sachs out of what was a terrific little race. Right now, Jack Aroot is down with Greg Sachs. Paul, he just walked out of the infield care center, mandatory checkup. First of all, you okay? Oh, Jack, I'm doing fine. And I just feel bad for the Elk Slim Pass team, you know. We had that Chevrolet room and a running real strong. But what about the tire now? Did the tire was it did it did it just go flat or were we maybe we'll be looking at some problems in the later races? I couldn't hear you, Jack, but we blew a right front tire up. It's no fault of good years. You know, I overshot my pit a little bit on that last stop on that caution about a half a pit and we let it just go around and so I had it probably about twenty some laps more than the other guys on their tires and when I got up in that outside groove, I'm sure we created a lot more heat running that groove, and, well, the right front tire just blew. This could be a some concern in the Winston itself, Paul Page, because you know they, he did not change tires, so he went about 50 laps, and then the tire blistered and went flat. Well, you can bet that all of the competitors in the Winston itself are keeping track of tire wear during the run of the Winston Open. You can see that the lead is beginning to close down now, but for the moment, it is still Dale Jarrett that is out in front. Of the Winston Open, the final moments of qualification for the running of the Winston, and at the end of the Winston itself, the prize is $200,000. It makes for one very rich afternoon in racing here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Well, we take a look back at the front of the field as we see Ernie Irvin move to the inside and challenge Dale Jarrett. Irvin on the inside now. Irvin trying to get into the final run here. They're side by side as they head through the second turn now. Moving for the back stretch. Benny Parsons, we're watching one whale of a race here. This is a fight now for the lead between three cars as Ernie Irvin pushes ahead. Paul, he's been this way all day, up and down. Now Dale Jarrett has the lead, Ernie Irvin has the lead. Who's going to be have that last chance for the 200,000? Look it's, at this race. And Sterling Marlin's been coming up there pretty often also. He's red hot today, and of course, being the past winner of this race, getting into the Winston that way, it's old hat for him. As the fight continues at the front of the field, a whale of a battle, 134 laps scheduled, 93 complete. Dick Trickle in the 66 car closes in in fourth place. Marlin continues to watch. Irvin moves to the outside, puts his nose in front of Jarrett. He has the spot. He has taken the spot away. Now here comes Sterling Marlin. And look, Trickle, three of rest coming off turn four. And they hold on as they come down toward the start-finish line. Trickle noses ahead now of Marlin. He's side-by-side side with Jarrett. 
A lot of the handling right now is going to be determined by who put what tires on where the last pit stop. And that's making the cars handle just a little bit differently right now, Paul. Bobby Unser watching here along with Benny Parsons. Benny, this kind of racing may give you an idea just how important this day is. Well, that's right, because these fellows are trying to become one of 20 great race cars and great race car drivers. And just think, one in 20. Benny, it doesn't look like much of a chance right there, but somebody's going to make it. And it's sure getting crowded in the front end. So now Dick Trickle forces his way down under Dale Jarrett. Remember, Ernie Irvin sits out just in front of this. And, and this there's Bronco. Bronco comes up as well in the 20 car. Yes, he qualified fourth. He's been running well all day. Looks like he's been laying back, waiting for this moment. Now, this group is going to slow each other down just a little bit. Benny, don't you agree? Because they're not running in single file, so the whole group slows down just a little bit. Oh, Ernie Irvin is loving this because he's driving away from this group while they're trying to figure out who's second. Well, they're leaning back and forth on each other. You see just a glimpse of Ernie Irvin in that yellow number four as he streaks away from this four-way battle from second place as they run side by side here at Charlotte Motor Speedway in the Winston Open, the last chance to get into the Winston itself and a run for $200,000. Ernie Irvin is out in front in the open, looking very strong at the moment. We'll be right back with more action from Charlotte. We're back in Charlotte, where Ernie Irvin has the lead by about a second and a half over that tremendous battle for fourth place. And this is a preliminary race, the final qualifier for the Winston itself. Now, the Winston is a two-segment race, a single race, but two different segments. The first one is 50 laps, then there's a break, and then there is a 20-lap race. And at the end of that entire road, well, it's $200,000 for the winner. A very rich payday, and that's created a lot of controversy in the past. For example, remember our coverage last year of the Winston as we went into the final two laps of the race. Darrell Waltrip was holding the lead over Rusty Wallace. Down the back stretch. Then Rusty Wallace was able to close in. Waltrip went high. Wallace closed in low and then began to drift up. He touched the back end of Darrell Waltrip's car. That sent Waltrip spinning across the grass. And Rusty Wallace was now unchallenged for the lead and for the $200,000 prize on this a million dollar day in stock car racing. So those two combatants saw one another here last year. Right now, they stand with Jackaroo. And I'm not sure, Paul Page, if a year makes any difference or not. We're watching the Winston Invitational here, but Rusty Wallace, it comes down to you and Darrell Waltrip again. Will we see the same scenario if it's necessary to win? I might think twice, but I'm going to run pretty hard. I'll tell you, it's uh, that was a big payday, but oh, me and, me and Daryl's relationship is healed up now. Is that relationship healed up, Daryl, or do you still think about it a little bit? No, Jackie, it's called dollars and cents. <laughs> he's got more dollars, so I know he's got more cents. So I think it'll be a good day for both of us. He's got a little better attitude this year. I, I feel confident I could race with him. Nothing would happen. Well, in all the Winstons that I've witnessed, they talk a good show until they drop that green flag. Yeah, I think that's the way Daryl may, in fact, feel about it. Walter gives you the big wink there at the end. You're looking at Ernie Irvin. He is the leader right now. He has been for some laps. Of course, there's a lot of racing action going on across the country, not just the Winston Open, but this is the fourth and final day of time trials for next Sunday's 74th running of the Indianapolis 500. And we'll be updating you on the time trials at Indianapolis here throughout the afternoon as well. Sam Posey is on station in the pits at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You know, Paul, between uh, between Rusty and, and Walter, it sounds like that's a little needle. Maybe that's a little message on the racetrack. Hey, give me a little bit more of a break this time. Right continues for second place you're watching there Dale Jarrett 21 car and we're looking back at fifth now Jarrett running in fifth right behind him is Michael Waltrip Jarrett seemed to have fallen off just a little bit uh, after the last pit stop he took off and did really well Paul but I think his tires are probably getting hot and not sitting themselves to the track at the moment Bobby, I believe on that last pit stop that this 21 car, Dale Jarrett, only changed two tires. The cars that have passed him, the leaders, I think changed four on that pit stop. And it looks like that good, fresh tires is very important today. Michael Waldrop comes up alongside Jarrett, moves past, picks up the position, 
as they run high over some slower cars. That's Bill Venturini down on the low side. And now Jared comes up and tucks his nose in behind Waltrip. Benny, I think it's safe to say of all the races throughout the year, this is one, the Open, in which only first place is the thing that matters. Well, <laughs> something else matters because it pays pretty decent money for second, third, and fourth. But you're right to be in that big race to Winston. These drivers spend a, a year thinking about this race all year until 1991. All they're thinking about, I want to be in the Winston and win this. I saw you checking down earlier for the purse distribution on this thing, too. Wish you were back behind the wheel. It's pretty decent, I'll tell you. Here, look at Michael Waltrip into the pits. Waltrip, who was in that battle. That's an unscheduled stop, or at least I would think it is. I must think. Oh, I thought maybe he had a flat tire, I think, Benny, and decided it wasn't. They looked at it, and he took off again. That was, that was a hurt. That's what it looked like, that he thought he had a flat tire, brought it in, and the crew checked it and said, no, it isn't flat. You know, the tires could be wearing a little bit faster than they think today, and that, that was the right front problem they were looking at. Gave the position back to Dale Jarrett. So he now runs alone in fifth place at the lead is still Ernie Irvin as we watch Jarrett circle this course in fifth position. And there is Ernie Irvin with Dick Trickle tucked up right behind Ford against Pontiac. That's an Oldsmobile in front. But look, Dick Trickle has run Ernie Irvin down a moment ago. You said Ernie Irvin had a second and a half lead. Dick Trickle now on the inside. He looks on the inside of Ernie. He has position, Paul. Coming Trickle's off a making turn. Making a run. Coming off a of turn four, right where most of them have been doing their passing all day. Down to the trioval, down into turn one. They Ernie Irvin done. continues to hold that high line, but Trickle's able to force the nose just a bit ahead in the 66 car. They move for the backside now. This crowd is alive with excitement as they watch this tremendous battle. Ernie Irvin now forges just a bit ahead, picks up the lead going into the number three corner. Rob Moroso sits back in third place and watches a great fight at the front. Number four turn coming off is where Dick Trickle seems to have a little bit of an edge. He gets up alongside of Irvin, and going into turn one, now they're even. Down the back straightaway, and it looks like Irving, Irvin pulls ahead just a little bit. Look at Moroso. He tried to make it three abreast coming off the second corner. Trickle got a little bit better run this time, Bobby. He may have him. Boy, with two cars there, Benny, he gets one heck of a good draft, so he should be sucked up there pretty tight. Out in front. There he is, Ernie Irving, the four car. Earlier we talked to him, he said, there's a different kind of pressure in the open. Well, I don't think it's any more pressure than any other race. You know, um, the biggest thing about this race is there's no points involved. So that lets you go a little more gung-ho and not worry about, you know, if you don't finish, you, you know, you didn't lose any points. But, uh, you know, it pays so much to win the Winston Open. And then to transfer into the Winston, get a shot at that big money, you know, them guys are racing for, uh, you, you put a lot of pressure on yourself because you could eat for a long time on that. And Moroso comes down the inside of Ernie Irvin, and Moroso forges up there. 21-year-old kid, Rob Moroso, number 20. You know, if there's any time for a young lad to be doing good, then he fist, it has to be the time. Young lad, very good at racing. He's chosen stock car racing. I really think he's shining right now. Just think how many people are watching. So Moroso is out in front in the open now. And at the moment, he is the qualifier for the 20th position in the Winston itself. But there are other cars that are ready to challenge. We'll be right back. One of the best equipped in the world. That's the tower just behind the main grandstand. Executive offices in there. And then in the main grandstand itself, how'd you like to be a member of the Speedway Club where you can dine fine cuisine and watch the race itself. It overlooks the start-finish line. Great facility here at Charlotte. Doing good work with it right now. Rob Morosa, who Benny Parsons knows way, his way around here pretty well. He sure does, because there's a preliminary rent race here to the Winston Cup cars, the Bush Grand National. This fella has won the last three 300 milers here tomorrow at Charlotte Motor Speedway. One of his better race tracks. 15 laps to go in the open for the moment. It is Rob Moroso that will move in to that 20th qualifying position. But Dick Trickle is up there and closing and beginning to challenge. We'll take a moment now and go up to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Get this update on qualifying. 
stepped up to where he can challenge Rob Moroso. Look at him as they come down across the start finish line. And that's Trickle's favorite place right off of turn four. Where he's been passing most of the cars, Paul, and he got right by Rob Moroso. But maybe Moroso's not going to give up so quick, did he? The ageless wonder, Dick Trickle, out of Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin, 48 years old last year, was a rookie in this division. One of my fellow snowmobile uh, people, I go snowmobile with him every winter. Now, he first raced here back in 1973. At that time, he drove a Chevrolet for Junior Johnson. Now he's out in front here today. He, by the way, finished fifth in his first race here. He's looking at a shot at the Winston. 123 laps complete, 134 the scheduled distance. Dick Trickle has the position that is critical right now. Moroso's dropped back to second. Ernie Irvin, the pole sitter, an early leader into third place. Then Marlin, then Dale Jarrett. A whale of a race, but it's only the preliminary. The big one is coming up. We'll be back. Back at Charlotte Motor Speedway now with just six laps to go and as they flash across the line five to go in the Winston Open the final qualifier for the running of the Winston itself you can see Dick Trickle in the 66 car is still out in front but right behind him is Rob Moroso and Moroso has been set up in a pretty good attack position. All of a sudden Dick Trickle is having a lot of problems getting off turn four. He's going in turn three now. All right, Dick Trickle out in front. Most interested owner on this car. He's right now with Gary Gerald. One of the great names of the sport, former champion Kale Yarborough. Kale, are you happy with the setup? Do you have enough muscle to hold off the kid Moroso? Well, we sure hope so. Of course, you know, it's not over till it's over, but uh, Dick Trickle is doing an excellent job. And I'll tell you one thing, this car on the business is the most nerve-wracking thing I ever did. I'd rather be out there racing. You heard it from a man who's put in many miles at this racetrack. He's had his share of wins. He's a nervous wreck, Paul. Not a victories, but he's yet to win a race as a car owner. Will this be the day the 66 car trickle is looking great well i'll guarantee that keel yard bro used to be an awful awful good race driver now what's at stake here is really important call especially for rob moroso dick trickle has won a lot of races but if that moroso could moroso could win this race today he's going to be the new bright shining star and get a chance to get in the winston and win two hundred thousand dollars well, this isn't too shaggy to win this one as Moroso closes up on Trickle. $30,000 to the winner here, plus the smallest part of the purse paid in the Winston itself is $18,000. So just by winning this, you're guaranteed $48,000. Dick Trickle starting to count that now with two laps to go as he flashes across the line. Moroso right there and watching. Who has the better position, Benny Parsons? Well, Trickle has the best position, but Rob Moroso has closed up. A trickle a few laps ago had a 15 car length advantage. It's nothing now. On the back stretch. Trickle still out in front. Now Trickle's going to use all the racetrack he can use. He certainly doesn't care how old or how young Moroso is. But look at Moroso coming right underneath it. That's off of turn four, right in the same place. Moroso moves to the inside now. Challenges Trickle as they come to the white flag. They flash across the line with Moroso just a nose ahead of Trickle. Trickle now pulls ahead through turn one and two as he takes the high line. Down the back stretch for the final time. A drag race now between Moroso and Trickle. Ernie Irvin closes up right behind. Marlon rides in fourth place. Moroso pushes his nose ahead. Unbelievable. Well, for the last lap, that's a close one. There's Ernie Irvin sitting right up behind him. Moroso and Trickle. Trickle comes just a bit ahead. And at the line, they're neck and neck, but it looked like Trickle to me. Looked like Moroso to me. Uh -oh. Oh. Looked like Trickle to me by six inches. They think he won. That's the Trickle proof. What a great finish. As they came to the line, Dick Trickle appeared to put just a few inches ahead of Moroso. Tell me this is an important run. Look how happy they are. Fabulous race, Paul. So Dick Trickle, unofficially for the moment, will move in to the Winston as the 20th qualifier. That two-segment race that pays $200,000 in this a $1 million day here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Boy, what if the Winston itself is as good as this, we've got a great afternoon in store for you. I won't be able to stand it, Paul. I mean, this, what a great automobile race. Let's take a look. Back to the finish as Dick Trickle rolls to a stop. 
There's Moroso to the inside, trickle to the outside. And Moroso rolling fast as they come to the line. And I bet you both of them had the throttle pedals bent. Couldn't run any harder than what they were right there. Just stabbed right down to the aluminum. The line is coming up. Trickle by what? Six inches maybe? Get a ruler out to measure this one. Fantastic. You travel at hundreds of miles an hour and it comes down to just a few inches at the end. You know, the only way they could decide between them who won it is by looking across the windows, Paul, and measuring the window glass. <laughs> This has been a terrific fight for the lead as Dick Trickle for the moment can rest. This was a little bit earlier in the run. Benny Parsons, you caught this one as they leaned on one another a bit. Well, this was when Trickle took the lead. The 20 car and Dick Trickle just touch. Watch him coming around there. Dick Trickle picks up the win. Let's go down to Gary Gerald. Here's Dick Trickle. He wants water right now. He comes over to the wall. Congratulations on what se sensational victory. That was thrilling. Well, I'll tell you what. Gail Yarbrough Motorsports, you know, Philip 66 Top Body Motor Oil, they deserve this, you know. And really, you owe it all to the team. Those guys pushing that car over there are the ones that won this race. They brought me the cars ready. We got just a little bit loose that last run, but I just managed to hang on. Now, you got 20 minutes to get ready to go after the big bucks. You got a cold drink. What's going to be your next move? How are you going to spend this time? I'll be ready. Just get the car ready. <laughs> you going to make any changes to the car? Uh, yeah, I'm hoping they'll sharpen the motor up a little bit and work on it. She's a little bit flat on the straightaway. We just got to get a little timing in her or something. 30000 in the pocket, a chance to go for two hundred grand. That puts a smile on his face, Paul Page. All, All right. <laughs> Dick Trickle picks up the win here. Rob Moroso in second, and the Irvin third, starting Marlon Fordfield. Jarrett, all of them were in a battle at the front at one time or another. But that's the result of the Winston Open. We'll return with more of ABC Sports coverage of Oldsmobile presents the Winston after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, we're back at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Those cars being pushed out onto pit road. They are the cars for the Winston itself. The results are final in the Winston Open. Dick Trickle wins it with it $30,000 and the 20th starting position in the race itself. We take a look back to what was one great race and the finish. Well, you couldn't ask for a closer run. Rob Moroso down on the inside driving for all he's worth. You can bet they were both stomping on the throttles just as hard as they could. But literally by inches, probably about six inches, it was Dick Trickle that got to the line ahead of the 20 car of Rob Moroso. What a spectacular finish. And that's only the preliminary. But now, let's just take a moment. Reflection. Let's go to Jack O'Rourke, who's with Rob Moroso. And what a terrific finish for young Rob Moroso. It was close, but you say you'd like to see the photo. Yeah, I really would. I mean, right there at the end, he was ahead of me. And when we went across the line, I was passing him, so I didn't know whether I got him or not. I came over my radio and said, you know, I'm not sure whether we got him, but we may have. The Crown Eagle Rosemobile just ran great today. Uh, you impressed a lot of people with your stamina going back. You fell back. You came to the front. You battled back with Trickle. Did you enjoy yourself? Oh, it was a blast. You know, I just, my crew and I just felt we could do this all year. And we've just been having real bad luck and not being able to show what we can do. And now, you know, we've shown you guys and the rest of everybody what the Crown Egg Wells can do. And we're going to be tougher in the 600. There's a little bit of Dick Trickle's paint on the side of your car. You traded a little bit. Oh, yeah, it was a fun race. We really had a good time. And it, relatively, it was a clean race. Uh, but if it's any closer than that in the Winston, it's going to be a real good race, too. I don't think you can say it any better than that, Paul. And I don't think that Rob Moroso has anything at all to apologize for. He drove a terrific race, but it was Trickle that was the winner there. And, of course, that's just the preliminary. It's just the setup for what we're going to be doing very shortly. And it's called the Winston. It's NASCAR's all-star race. Now, the most interesting format. It's actually two races separated by one very long pit stop. The first race, 50 laps, $50,000 to the winner. And then when you finish that, you line up in the order that you finish the first race, that becomes your starting order for the second race. 20 laps, and then we're talking $200,000. Big money here in one of the richest paydays in motorsport. And I'll tell you what, when you have that kind of money on the line and the kind of prestige we're talking about, it makes for a lot of controversy. Who could forget last year in the running of the Winston? In the final laps, it was Darrell Waltrip as he was trying desperately to hold off a charging Rusty Wallace. 
The Winston has been a no-holds-barred battle for survival since its inception in 1985. Last year's race ran true to form with Daryl Waldrop and Rusty Wallace, the main characters. With two laps to go in the final run for $200,000, Wallace laid his nose against Waldrop's tail. Daryl went into a long, slow slide, and Rusty coasted for the win. You know, it happened this way in 87. And I don't think those guys were doing that on purpose either. No, I didn't have nothing to do with doing that purpose. It was a tough race. I'm sorry for Daryl. Glad we won. Daryl Waltrip was a little more direct. It was uncalled for. I could never race. I could never walk through this garage area having done that to someone. But some people can, and more power to them, I guess. They, they just took $200,000 away from me and, and told that boy that what he did was A-OK. -okay. Do it again, buddy, if you got to. While the drivers waged a war of words, elbows were the weapon of choice on pit road. Rusty Wallace immediately assumed the role as NASCAR's newest bad boy. His decreasing popularity showed in Atlanta when he won the Winston Cup championship. His title celebration was marred by catcalls. The black hat had been passed. That hurt me a little bit, and then after a while I got, I got mad. And then after a while I put a block in front of it. You know, and then I had the media, a lot of media people talking to me, what do I think about it, what do I think about it? And I told them, you know, I can't change my driving style, but, uh, uh, and I never will change my driving style. It's still going to be as hard as I can possibly make that machine go. Uh, but, uh, sure, I didn't like all the booze because I want to be popular just like everybody else wants to be popular amongst the fans. And I'll try my damnedest to do that. And sometimes you can't have everything you want. Waltrip didn't fare as well as Wallace on the track. But his popularity, once at ground zero, had soared right off the scale. I guess you don't ever really realize how many fans you have until something like the Winston occurs. And then they all stand up and cheer at one time. And I think that's when you realize just how many fans you do have. In December, the fans handed Darrell the only title that had eluded him through his entire 18-year career. The sport's most popular driver award. With that, his victory trophy case was complete. I can remember times when things were so bad and my image was so rotten. And a few people in the garage area would say, he's always going to be that way. He'll never change. And it'll be a cold day and you know where when DW is the most popular driver in NASCAR. For Rusty Wallace, it's been a struggle. A battle to gain back the fans he lost one year ago. A fight limited to time outside the race car. I'm not going to change nothing. I'm still going to drive hard. I'm still going to go for it. You know, it's too bad that happened. I feel sorry for what happened to Daryl. I'm glad I won the race. Well, there's Rusty's car as they move it out to position, ready for his run. And, of course, Darrell Waltrip is in the Winston as well. Those two winners plus 18 other winners ready to fight with one another in one very rich afternoon here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Now, with us today, Benny Parsons, you got a couple of thousand miles on this circuit. This is a most unusual race. Unique and very, very important. And some of the reasons it's unique and important, number one, points. There's no points to worry about. Number two, money. Folks, $200,000. That's the biggest first place prize of the year in NASCAR racing. Three, the pressure the drivers have to go through. The hype concerning this event is incredible. You know, someone asked me, can we have a replay of last year? I said, no. But I got thinking about it. All of these things, it would turn the calmest guy in the world into a raving maniac. Paul, hang on. We're going to see the Winston. I know you're looking forward to it. We are as well. Bobby Unser, three-time winner of the Indianapolis 500, is here too. Bobby, this is a race because of the different segments that require some tactical thinking. Well, Paul, for example, last year there were three different segments in the Winston. Now, the first one, which was 75 laps, had been a done away with because it didn't really seem to have a big effect on how the race turned out. But they've done away with that one, moved it to two segments now. And the first one, which is 50 laps, hey, that's really an important race. And the reason it's important is because how the drivers finish there is going to determine how they start in the 20-lapper. Now, the 20-lapper is very important because that's where the $200,000 is and all the glory. And if you don't finish, like in the first 10 or the first 50 or in the first 50-lapper, hey, you're not going to have a chance for the last one. And you know, nobody ever remembers who finishes second in the Winston. So that means one thing, winning is the only thing that's really important here. And I think your banker is real interested in how you do as well. 
the all-star race of NASCAR. And I'll tell you, when you're at Charlotte, you're right in the middle of stock car land. The crowd here absolutely loves to watch the racing. And this is one of their favorite events. Two different segments, 50 laps, then 20 laps, and $200,000 at the end of the road. We'll be back. Way was an eventful afternoon for Benny Parsons. Driving number 72, Parsons was lucky to escape a turn four tangle that sent pole sitter David Pearson and title contender Bobby Allison spinning across the infield. Late in the race, Parsons ran out of fuel and fell a lap behind, but he managed to come back and run down Cale Yarborough for the victory. Charlotte was extra satisfying for Parsons. The winner's purse boosted him into the elite group of drivers who have won a million dollars in Winston Cup competition. We're back at Charlotte Motor Speedway. The final preparations underway now for the two-segment running of the Winston. Big money on the line in a very, very rich payday and a most unusual event. We just concluded the Open, and that qualified Dick Trickle as the final winner into the Winston itself. It's a two-segment race. The preliminaries now are complete. We're ready for the run itself. The first segment, 50 laps. Then they line up in the order of finish from the first segment, and that is the starting positions for the second segment of 20 laps. Big money, $50,000 on the line for the first section and $200,000 for the winner overall. So one very big day. One driver that could have driven in this race was Neil Bonnet. He is not in it. Jack Arruda is with him now. And Paul, it's because of an injury that occurred back in the springtime at Darlington, South Carolina, which has since caused Neil Bonnet to take the year off. And by virtue of that, Morgan Shepard made his way into the field. Uh, kind of mixed emotions to be here watching the race, Neil. Yeah, I'd kind of like to be out there fixing time in one of these race cars, but it, it just wasn't to be, and uh, looks like it's going to be a heck of a race. I'm looking forward to it. The amnesia has subsided considerably, but the doctors have said for you to take the rest of the season off. I've made big gains on amnesia. I've got some other problems uh, goes along with it, and until I get that corrected, I'm not going to be able to get back in a race car, but uh, I'll tell you what, it's just good to be around these guys again. Well, Paul, he's a real race fan. He's not down here on pit road. He's got two motorhomes parked in the infield, and he's going to kick back and watch the race from there. And it's great to see Neil and looking healthy. We hope to see him back in a race car soon. Now, they continue to wait and watch up at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Let's get an update on the fourth day of time trials from Sam Posey. Well, Paul, very close to the start of the Winston. One terrific race coming up. We'll be back. Segment race that is the Winston with the $200,000 payoff to the winner at the end of the day. A lot of big money on the line. You can see the cars are lining up in position on this track. They not only have a unique race here, they have a very unique qualifying situation for the first 19 positions. Yesterday, they staged that qualifying, which includes time lapse and a pit stop. Now, this is Jeff Bodine on his way into the pits in a pit stop that really did not go well. They had to stop before the yellow line, but you can see the nose of the car is over the line. NASCAR official tried to wave him back when they pushed the car back. The jack fell over, was stuck under the car, and they just had to abandon the pit stop totally. This car last year started on the pole for the Winston. This year starts 19th. Well, Bodine wasn't happy about that one at all. He had some uh, long conversations, but the situation stood. And then late in the run, Dale Earnhardt came out. The crew bailed over the wall. Now take a look at this for a stop. Earnhardt had already blistered off some great laps. And now they went to work. Never see the fellows in right rear timing. He finishes the jack down and Earnhardt drives away. Now he has to go all the way around the racetrack and come back to the start finish line. But the pit stop itself was 11.83 seconds. The crowd loved it. The team loved it. And it put Earnhardt on the pole for the running of the Winston. One terrific position. But way back in 19th position, there it is, the number 11 car. That is Jeff Bodine. The stop wasn't that hot, and they abandoned. Jerry Gerald is now with it. Well, Paul, yesterday, Jeff Bodine was a very unhappy race car driver. Today, you're smiling. You've accepted your fate, obviously. The question is, have you got enough muscle in 50 laps to get up and challenge Earnhardt and company for the big bucks and a chance to have a good starting position in the final 20-lap segment? 
Wow, it's a long ways up there. <laughs> Uh, my wife's watching Kathy at home, and she's seen me many times come, come from this far behind. I know short tracks in New England, uh, New York State, Martinsville, Virginia, and go to the front. We can do it. This car is good enough to do it. Uh, if things go right for us, we'll get up there and challenge that uh, number three car and, and 11 and or 17, all those other guys. It's going to be a job, but I think we're good enough. All right, Jeff Bodine is confident. He starts inside row 10. Paul, he's the only man who has led eight of nine Winston Cup races this year. He has that kind of confidence going for him. All right, Jeff Bodine, one more person to be introduced, and he'll start way at the other end of the field. This is the platform out in the middle of the grass area between the main stretch and the pits. And there he is, Dale Earnhardt, who will start on the pole in the Winston with that terrific qualifying run yesterday. The crowd more than pleased with that situation. Of course, he headquarters not far from here. And Jack Arute is right there with him. Well, we're here with, with Dale Earnhardt as he makes his way to his car because they're going to be getting in. But, Dale, you really put it to him in qualifying. But what is going to be the key in the first 50 laps? Do you just run away or do you try and save something for the last 20? Well, it's a race. We're going to try to win the first 50 first. We'll get on to that last 20. But car is working pretty good. I watched that in races. I think we got a good combination. We'll see what happens. We can work a tire stagger and change the car. We got that close. Okay, that's the story from here. Let's go back up to you, Paul. Well, that pole position was worth $75,000 plus $5,000 to each of the six crewmen. Now, there's a view of the giant grandstand here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's 1.5 miles around. It's got a double dog leg. You can see as they go down the back stretch, then into the high bank super speedway side, and then into the double dog leg once again. Yesterday, Bill Elliott took us for a ride around Charlotte. Okay, folks, here we are approaching the start and finish line at Charlotte. Coming down, you come into the inside of the racetrack and drift back out to the wall and then back to the bottom of the racetrack going into turn one. And you're back about full throttle at this point, going to enter in turn two. And as you exit turn two, you want to drift out as close as you can possibly can to the wall. Here you are going down the back straightaway once again, starting enter turn three high, and then bring it down to the white line as close as possible as you enter turn three. Back full throttle as you come out of turn four, and let it drift back up to the wall. A little four is a little tricky here at Charlotte. Here you are coming back to the oval. Here we are back at the start finish line, and somewhere around 32 seconds. Well, the crowd, for the moment they're seated, Benny, I don't think they're going to stay there very long. They've been on their feet most of the day. Well, I'm sitting down right now, but believe me, I'm going to be standing up in just a little bit. Well, the stands are just packed full here. We're very close. It's quiet for the moment at Charlotte, but in just a few seconds, these engines will roar into life. I think you see one of the most enthusiastic crowds here at Charlotte for the Winston. You do most of the races, too, Paul. You see all those people there? That's for the Winston this week. Next week, they're running the Coca-Cola 600 at this same speedway, and they'll have the same amount of people here next weekend. Dick Trickle being strapped into his car. They turned the car around quickly because he just finished the 200-mile run of the Winston Open. Remember, 200 miles is pretty tiring here, so Dick has already got go a little bit going against him, but he's a strong race driver. He's in good shape. Rusty Wallace makes his final adjustments. The one thing that Trickle has, if there is an advantage, is he knows the course right now. Exactly. That's what I was going to say, Paul. He has 200 miles under his belt. He knows exactly what to do to the chassis to make the car handle. Might be an advantage to him. All right, we're very close now. Let's go down once again to Jackaroo. And Paul, I'm with Congressman Bill Hefner to give the traditional command. Congressman Hefner. Gentlemen, start your engines. Twenty of the best. They're lined up. Rows of two, ten rows. Darrell Waltrip's crew making a final adjustment, ready for the run that is the Winston, a two-segmented race. We saw Congressman, Hef Congressman Hefner just a moment ago, the 8th Congressional District of North Carolina, where I live. Oh, you, you need some extra help there from the government? Is that it? I got him on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Darrell Waltrip sits ready. Crews making the final adjustments to each of the cars and drivers, the netting being replaced, that protective netting back into the window window on the left side of the car. 
we've showed what happened last year already two or three times. But that isn't going through the driver's mind now, Paul. They're thinking about this year and what they have to do to get to the front. Ollie, Dale Earnhardt, Darrell Walker. That's their thoughts now. What have we got to do to get to the front and stay there? A they all smile on, Dar on Dale Earnhardt's face. Bobby, you were talking about the tactics in this first run. Yes, and, you know, I was just going to make a mention that they all look like they're really casual and laid back and relaxed, but inside their stomachs, the butterflies are flying. This is a big race, and it's not just the money. Hey, it's the notoriety, it's the publicity, it's the television. It makes this race extremely important. Who would want to run 20 if there's only 20 cars here? And who wants to go home and say, I finished dead last? No one. Remember, if a guy doesn't finish in the top 10 in this 50 lapper, Benny, he's really not going to have much of a chance in the next one coming up. Another so, aspect of this event is that there are no points at stake here, and that loosens things up a bit too, Benny. They can go for it because they always use that excuse, well, I, I took it easy because I wanted a good finish for the points. Can't use that excuse here. Derek Cope, the Daytona winner. Yes, and you know, he's really looking. He's not had such a good year since the Daytona win, Paul. He's really looking for a good ride here. In fact, if you look at a lot of cars in the race today, this race means more to them than a lot of the other races they could be running. Probably rates about first on their list today. Well, I'll tell you what, it does generate excitement all through the garage area. The atmosphere was just electric with excitement both yesterday and today. And the unique qualifying format added to the uh, most unusual race that they've created here <laughs> really gets the fans pumped up. Harry Gant, the oldest man in the field. Another thing to remember is they won't be having any pit stops here unless there's something wrong. Or if somebody has to come in the pit, either under the green or the yellow, ah, they're going to be in trouble. The five car, Ricky Rudd. He sits waiting. As the engines come up to temperature and in just a few moments, they will signal this field away. Bobby Hillen's car. All of these men have qualified for this race with a victory. No losers here, a winner, every last one of them. Isn't it interesting the different types of helmets that the different drivers use at NASCAR today? Benny, they used to all use short helmets. Now they've got motocross helmets to open face helmets to like we, what we call indie helmets, every type imaginable. Jeff Bodine was showing his new helmet off the other day and he was talking about aerodynamics inside the car. <laughs> All the way back now in the 10th and final row, there is Jeff Bodine. He's set to go to the front. Boy, you tell me they don't love this thing. And of course, Dick Trickle starts in the 20th and final position, the outside of the last row. As the field now begins to roll away, we take a look back from the camera mounted on board the pace car. Davey Allison over there to the left. Dale Earnhardt sits on the pole, begins to roll a little bit forward. And the panorama of that giant grandstand behind. 20 of the best there is. Let's take a look at the starting field. The poll winner from yesterday's exciting qualifying session, Dale Earnhardt, the winner of the frantic finish in the Winston of 87 and currently leading in points in quest of his fourth national championship. Davey Allison is to the outside. He prevailed in this year's Bristol 500 by a mere eight inches, perhaps the closest finish in NASCAR history. The second row on the inside is Darrell Waltrip, who won the inaugural running of the Winston in 1985, taking the checkered flag as his engine blew up. Outside is Mark Martin, his first time as a starter in NASCAR's all-star race, a two-time winner on the Major League Stock Car Racing Tour. The third row on the inside is Morgan Shepard, the only driver this year to finish in the top ten in each of the nine Winston Cup events. He replaces the recovering Neil Bonnet. To the outside is Bill Elliott. He won the Winston in 1986 when it made its only appearance at Atlanta International Raceway. The fourth row on the inside is Derek Cope, who gained an invitation to this prestigious event by winning this year's Daytona 500. He did so on the very last lap. To the outside is Alan Kowicki, the winner of the first NASCAR race held at Phoenix in 1988. He's hoping to become the first owner-driver ever to win this event. And in the fifth row, Kenny Schrader and Lake Speed. The sixth row is Harry Gant and Kyle Petty. Looking back through the remainder of this field, back in the ninth row, Bobby Hillen. Eighth row, Bobby Hillen. Ninth row, Trey Labonte, Phil Parsons, and Jeff Bodine, Dick Trickle make up the tenth and final row. Twenty racers here. That's the starting field for the Winston. Bobby Unser talked earlier about the tactics of this thing. Benny Parsons, if you were rolling around behind that pace car right now, 
like you might be in this car, Bill Elliott's, what might you be thinking? What would you want to do? How can I get by that fellow in front of me? Davey Allison doesn't have anyone in front of him, but he's got a pretty tough car on the inside of it, Dale Earnhardt. And it's hard to beat Dale even at a start. Dale has a lot of confidence this year, Benny, and he just, Bobby, or excuse me, uh, the Allison boy, Davey has got to really go to beat him at the start, and he's going to try hard. Take a look at Davey Allison. His starting position is the outside of the front row. 50 laps in this first race. $50,000 to the winner, but perhaps even more important is the finishing order becomes the lineup for the second and final run. The car makes that will race here today. As the pace car now rolls down onto the pit road, Dale Earnhardt centers himself on the track and takes a look up at the starter. Doyle Ford with the green flag and Dale Earnhardt moves out in front being chased by Waltrip. Allison drops back to third place. You can tell that Waltrip kind of knew what was going to happen. He knew that Dale was going to get the jump. Hey, he cut right in behind him. That Davey slide back just a little ways. It's not going to help him too much at the early part, Paul. And look at Earnhardt on the back stretch as he begins already to pull away. The rest of the field strings out. Waltrip in second place. Allison in third. Mark Martin in fourth. They come for the line. Earnhardt leads the first lap. Not only is it a big purse and a big day, but in the past it has been a predictor of things to come. Waltrip, Earnhardt, and Wallace have all won this race and then gone on to take the championship. You can just see how much confidence that Dale Earnhardt has when he can take off the first lap like that into the first turn and just literally jump off about five or ten car lengths and somebody as good as Darrell Waltrip. Hey, that guy's really got his confidence up. Waltrip chases down Earnhardt. But Earnhardt's car, Bobby, moving up in the corner just a little bit, like he might have a push problem or something wrong. Waltrip has gained two or three car lengths on him. Let's see if he can continue to gain. Well, we watched that Walter last year, Benny. He is double quick at Charlotte. And certainly put on the good show for him last year. Earnhardt on the back stretch, the black number three car out in front. He's had one terrific season, and he's turning some pretty quick laps here. Last lap at 164.1 miles an hour. Mark Martin closes up behind Allison. The leader Earnhardt kicks off another lap. Now you can line Earnhardt's car up with a white line and you can see how much drift he's running through or how much drift he has in the car as he goes to the turn. Like one and two turns, doesn't have as much as he does down in three and four turns. Car gets a little bit further sideways. No challenges at the front. You're on board with Elliott. As he works his way through turn three, rides in fifth place right now. There's Mark Martin on the inside of Davey House trying to take that third spot away. As we watch Bill Elliott's car, Mark on the inside, David trying to fight back. Mark has the spot. Great view. Bill Elliott bringing you these pictures. You can see the leader, Earnhardt, as they work their way to the back stretch. We're on board now with Allison, who is lined up right behind Mark Martin. One of the things you notice is you peel into the high bank here at Charlotte Paul, and a driver has to actually look up in the air. And it's very important on these type of tracks to look very far ahead of you, which is raising your eyes up. Board with fourth place, Davey Allison right now. The leader is Earnhardt. He comes into the lead from the pole. But it seems Benny Parson like everybody's playing it a little cozy. But now here comes Mark Martin down on the inside of Waltrip. Waltrip got a little high coming off of the corner on the backside. Mark Martin pushes alongside Waltrip. He's got a nose ahead. They go into the corner. Waltrip forges ahead. Waltrip had a little bit better truth going in, but obviously just before that he slipped out a little bit. Tires may not be suiting the track just perfectly as of yet. Well, Martin's not giving up. They come through the first dog leg. Martin pushes a nose ahead of Waltrip once again. The fight continues. The battle is for second place. Earnhardt is the leader. Waltrip comes way high through one. Davy Allison closes in and watches the fight. Mark Martin picks up second place on the back stretch. So already, here in the first lap, six laps complete at the Winston. We've got a battle. Dale Earnhardt is out in front. We'll return with more coverage of the Oldsmobile Presents the Winston after this message and a word from our ABC station.
We're back at Charlotte and take a look at this. The defending champion, Rusty Wallace, with his car on the way back to the garage area. Wallace has pulled out of the competition and taken the car back to the garage area. We will keep you updated on this situation. At the front of the field, the black number three car, Dale Earnhardt. Chasing him is Mark Martin. Those two are running away from the third place car. That's Bill Elliott. Well, you can see Martin, who's just been right up on Earnhardt's butt bumper, Paul. What it is, it's the intimidator getting intimidated by Mark Martin. Young man who has only one victory to his name, Mark Martin. Dick Trickle started in 20th, moved up to 11th. This is a fight for fourth place. Darrell Waltrip Benny has been running a particularly high line and seems to be getting away with it. He's running awfully high. Davey Alsh is trying to get by him on the inside, but he's keeping Davey's car bound down there. And look, Derek Cope in the red, white 10, and Alan Kowicki trying to go by Davey Alsh. That's what they call a Richard Petty line. Runs higher than anybody else on the racetrack. Dale, Dale is still out in front, but, but look at the different lines that they have. Now there goes Cope on the outside, or trying to get by Darrell Walker. Fight continues. Battle for fourth place on board. Davy Allison. As they come down through the flat of this circuit, the double dog leg. Mile and a half around Charlotte. That's Cole Wickey that's just up alongside. We pointed out that Rusty Wallace pulled his car back to the garage area. Let's get an update from Jack Aroo. Well, he's not at all happy, Rusty. Expired engine. Yeah, sure did. A little early, Jackie. Uh, I don't really don't know what caused it. That's real uncommon for this team. The cars always run great and handle great. It was handling good. Just one of those things, man. It looked, just keeps happening bad to us this year. We, I guess we uh, lost a piston or a valve or something. I think it was a piston, but man, it was going to the front. It felt good. You need a stroke of good luck because you've had none all year. What do you think you can do as a team to turn this season around? I don't know. If I knew, I'd do it because, I mean, there's nobody pulling harder any, any harder for this team than I am. I mean, I'm just, uh, it's eating inside out of me. I'm just working my brains out. Paul? Well, another individual with problems, Jeff Bodine, as the number 11 car is in. Remember, they had problems yesterday in that pit stop, and now they come in for 12 seconds in and out. That's kind of ironic. Uh, he had to have a flat tire to cause that, but that kind of got him, I guess, for that one he didn't make yesterday. The fight for fourth place. Mowicki has managed to place himself ahead of Coach, but you can see they are bunched up there. Brett Bodine, by the way, came up from 16th to 9th in the first five laps, but then he fell back to 19th, just suddenly going backwards. Continues. Let's get an update on Jeff Bodine's situation. Here's Gary Darrell. Well, actually, we've got an update on Brent Bodine, the other half of the brother combination, who's also struggling. His throttle linkage is hung up on the air cleaner. His crew says he's only getting about half throttle. They've fallen to the back of the pack. They're greatly frustrated. Now we'll go check on the problems of Jeff Bodine. All right, Gary, thanks a lot for that report. We were watching Brett earlier, and he did make a charge up, but then fell backwards. Dale Earnhardt continues to lead. Very unkind, un, un uh, regular type of a problem, Paul, to have a throttle sticking up on the air cleaner, but everybody knows the throttle linkage does run very close to the air cleaner. Earnhardt has completed 18 laps in this first 50 lap run. Looks like he's having his own way, Paul. Mark Martin made a run on him. Looks like Earnhardt just pressed the accelerator down a little bit more and drove away from Mark Martin. There's a lot of people here this afternoon that was worried about this happening. Earnhardt driving away from 19 of the best stock cars there is. Benny, it just might be that Mark Martin realizes that he can't run him down or there would be no sense in running him down this early on, and he could be trying to save his tires, saying, hey, this 50 lapper is important for the latter part. Look at the right, the smoke coming off the right rear tire of Dale's car there. Well, he's running it hard. There's no question about that. Again, to show you how seriously they take this race, Benny Parsons, when we first went through the garage area, you saw a lot of new equipment. A lot of new equipment. New race cars and also a lot of different engines. This car has an engine he would not run in a 600-mile race. This baby is good for maybe 200, 250 miles. Different camshaft. A little bit more compression. The clearance is a little bit different. A lot of these engines out there are hand grenades waiting to expire. Well, the answer, how's an engine builder know how long a motor's going to last when they build it for a shorter segment like the Winston run is? Well, in the NASCAR,
NASCAR Racing Series, Paul. They run about 30, 38 races a year. It's pretty good what it's going to do. So what he'll do is he'll loosen the pistons up a few more thousands, maybe another 3,000. Loosen the crank jack up and maybe one or two thousand, things like this. And he won't care if this race is over, what happens to the engine. He's just got to finish this race, and that's all. Things are fairly static behind Dale Earnhardt right now. It is Mark Martin chasing, then back a few hundred feet from that. Bill Ellis from Jack Root. Dale Earnhardt knows all about this kind of hero worship. He did it himself as a kid in Kannapolis, a North Carolina mill town. Dale idolized his favorite race car driver, his father, the late Ralph Earnhardt, a successful dirt track racer and the 1956 NASCAR Sportsman Titleist Ralph Earnhardt laid the groundwork for his oldest son's fame and fortune. I watched him race so much, Benny. Uh, it seemed like when I sat down in a race car, I knew what to do, even though I was a rookie and it was green. But still, uh, the things that happened to me, I'd watched Daddy so many times, and it, I knew what to knew what was ex to expect. And uh, I, I tore up my my share of stuff the first year I raced, but then I started winning right out of the box the next you know, the next season. So let me tell you what color that first race car was. It was pink. Still <laughs> ever hard. It was pink with an apricot top, so these pink hats and everything everybody's wearing now, man, we had them back when I first started racing. <laughs> At age 27, Dale was NASCAR's Rookie of the Year. At age 28, Winston Cup champion. He joined forces with Richard Childress in 1984, and together they proved to be tough to beat. I want to drive for Richard Childress. He doesn't pay me to drive for him. He pays me to drive, but I want to drive for him. And the same thing right on down the line. Every man there is there because they want to be. Together, they've toasted one another's success and have known the bitter, choking taste of defeat. This year, one lap away from his first Daytona 500 victory, Dale ran over debris on the track. The tire exploded, as did Earnhardt's chance for the win. You talking about having a bad day? <laughs> I don't think you could have a better day than that, but the first thing that crossed my mind is... is get back to the line when it was happening and when it was over you know was getting okay now what you've lost you know you've lost and I, I came to the pits and i sat in the car and i just sat there a little bit and i you know till I, all the feelings inside of me settled down where i could decide how i felt and I, I put everything away just like it never happened a less controlled dale earnhardt wouldn't have handled the disappointment with the grace and courage he showed as much as it hurt the loss was nothing compared to what he felt when an injured Bobby Allison was forced from his car. Or when his friend Neil Bonnet announced he'd be out a year. If Neil has to retire or quit or whatever, or have to be, not drive for five months, it's going to kill him inside because he, he, he loves racing and driving so much. He loves it. He loves racing. I think that's the way I'll be. Is, uh, you know, they'll probably bolt me in when I can't get in. <laughs> Up front, Dale Earnhardt is still the leader, but that big number nine, that belongs to Bill Elliott, and he has been closing in on board with Bill now. You look up ahead, there is Earnhardt, and Elliott is knocking at the back door. He sure is. And you know, we saw this movie not, what, a couple of years ago? Earnhardt and Bill Elliott. Earnhardt through the grass, these fellas trade and pan all afternoon. Well, while the fight for the lead continues, Earnhardt still holds it. Brett Bodine is in the pits. They're working on his car, and Derek Pope has made two unscheduled stops. Earnhardt is still out in front. We'll be right back. Still battle at the front. Dale Earnhardt trying to hold off Bill Elliott. Martin is third. Then Kenny Schrader. They are both on the fly and catching the leaders. And as we take a look down through the field, Kowicki in fifth. Look there. Dick Trickle started 20th and is now up running in sixth place. Davey Allison, Harry Gant, Morgan Shepard, Bobby Hillen. Rounds off the top ten, half the field here in the Winston. With six laps to go, the fight is at the front. Bill Earnhardt wants to stay in front. Bill Elliott wants to get in front because the inside line, the preferred place to be on that restart. 20 laps to go. You want to be on the inside down in turn one. You know, as we watch Earnhardt as he goes around, Benny and Paul, he just never makes a mistake. We hear that he's got to push in the car, but just watch him. He just knows exactly where it's going to be all the time. Even though Elliott's catching him, it's not likely that he's going to be able to pass him, at least not very easy. Bill Parsons just ahead of Earnhardt. And Earnhardt comes to the inside as they come to the line. And Elliott gets around as well. They stay in contact in their fight for the lead. Earnhardt really smoking that right rear now with five laps to go. You know, 
Well, very often, Paul, if a car has a push in it, like we understand that Dale's had, he'll loosen up that right rear just by spinning it, making the smoke a little bit. That'll loosen the car up a little bit. Earnhardt still out in front. He's led every lap. Rusty Wallace out of the competition when his engine let go very early on. Elliott. Dawsonville Georgia sitting right up behind Richard Childress is in that same position and wondering boy can he hang on to it remember they were there at Daytona and it didn't work out there but he's had a terrific season since then four laps to go Earnhardt works his way into three you would think that Bill Elliott would just want to sit there but no he wants on the inside on the three starts we see the Bernard's pushing that may be the right front tire that's smoking as badly as it is. Could well be. winner for the second round but he's picked up a few bucks Benny he won fifty thousand dollars for winning this race plus seventy five thousand for winning the pole position yesterday and he gets eighteen thousand to start already one hundred forty three thousand dollars if he finishes last in the 20 laps all right now they've got some time Bobby Unser. ten minutes Paul it's going to be a ten minute pit stop remember they can't change the springs they can't change the anti-roll bars the sway bars they can't change any major component. They can bump the timing up. They can put little spring spacers in it. Not much more than that. I told you they'd be standing up. Boy, they are. Great run by Dick Trickle, too. There he comes in. As Trickle was able to go from 20th to 6th, and you can see that uh, his car has seen some action throughout the running of the afternoon. He has some of Rob Moroso's tire rubber on the right side of his automobile. Harry Gant rolls in. There is Earnhardt's car as they take a look down in the engine room. Toughest guy in NASCAR racing today, right there, Dale Earnhardt. Oh. Now you'll notice the fans, in this case a mechanical contraption to make wind, as they try to keep their driver, Dale Earnhardt, cool, and they've also got a turbine going on the front of the engine to keep those coolers cooled down because the car is going to sit here now for 10 minutes. And that could be a problem in the engine compartment. Earnhardt, even though he's won, doesn't seem to be pleased with that run. He had reported he was fighting handling problems throughout the afternoon. The first round complete. Earnhardt is the winner, followed by Elliott, Mark Martin, Kenny Schrader, Alan Kowicki. That's the way they'll line up for the start of the 20-lap race in about nine minutes right now the crews can go to work on the car but it's very limited work dick trickle comes up from 20th to 6th we'll return with more of abc sports coverage of oldsmobile presents the winston after this Coors legend a commercial message and a word from our abc stations 
three laps behind in car 42, was about to become the strangest winner ever in the World 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. It began when second place Buddy Baker blew an engine. Fourth place Richard Petty also blew up. Then leader David Pearson lost a wheel and dropped out. Finally, new leader Paul Goldsmith blew yet another engine. Now in the lead, Panch called on teammate Petty for relief and watched him drive to victory lane in the car Panch had started seventh in the seventh race of the season, the seventh annual World 600 at Charlotte. Your grade motor oil for more protection than you'll ever need. By True Value Hardware, for quality, selection, and personal attention, make True Value Hardware your store first choice. By Ford and your Ford dealer, have you driven a Ford lately? And by Coors, enjoy the original taste of Coors, the Rocky Mountain legend. And he's dialed into the racetrack with we're back at Charlotte Motor Speedway, the break in between the first and second final round of the Winston. I'm Paul Page with Benny Parsons, Bobby Unser, Gary Gerald, and Jack Aroot. A tremendous crowd here. We've got motorsports all through the month of May. Next Sunday, of course, the 74th running of the Indianapolis 500-mile race. We'll have racing throughout the afternoon, one week from today. International Race of Champions, the first round of the 1990 season from Talladega. And then we'll wrap it all up with the premier Formula One race, the Grand Prix of Monaco. A full afternoon of racing, but there's plenty of racing left here at Charlotte. Let's go down to Gary Gerald. Flurry of activities you would expect, Paul Page. Left side rubber being applied now. Dale Earnhardt sets here. He appears to be calm and nonchalant. How badly was it pushing during that first 50 lap? Well, it's just a little tight off, especially three, three and four. And uh, I could drive it through one and two pretty good. Uh, I just want to fine tune a little bit, get a little better off four, and I think it'll kick. How much of a concern was Elliott coming up in your mirror in the late stages? I really, really wasn't concerned. Long as he didn't get it beside me, so as long as I kept him in the mirror, I was okay. He's the man that won it once before. He's been second and third out of the five years, Paul. He'll start from the pole. Jack Aroot is with the man who finished second in this first segment. Jack? And Gary, for the next four minutes, what he's going to do is think about how he's going to get around Dale Earnhardt. A good run, but not good enough. What are you going to change in the last 20 laps? Well, the car got off a little bit there at the end, but the car was pretty good there at the very first. You know, and I was able to run them down, and if I can just, you know, Dale's going to be hard to pass no matter what, especially with 20 laps to go. But I feel like if I can ever get in front, the car is good enough to leave, and just that's good enough, you know, to stay back behind. But when do you make your move? Do you make it early? Do you try and get the jump on the start, or do you try and feel them out, Bill? Wait and see. Just wait and see. Well, we've only got about three minutes before we get the signal to start the engines up again, Paul Page. Bill Elliott pulls the helmet on. He uh, started the first round in sixth place, moved up to second. Dick Trickle with the best improvement from 20th up to sixth. He's been a factor here in front of the crowd at Charlotte throughout the day. Now, we'll keep track here. We've got some great action coming up. Also, Sam Posey is continuing to watch at Indianapolis as time trials in the final day continue. Well, we're back at Charlotte Motor Speedway now. We'll continue to update you on the activities from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Dick Trickle with that marvelous run from 20th to 6th. Now Jack Arood is right there. Dick, you had the longest day of all the competitors in the Winston, but you say you're having a good time. Well, it was fun. Racing's what I do, you know. I've raced for 31 years throughout the Central United States, all the way from Canada to Florida, Midwest, you know, to Nashville, whatever. And uh, now I'm in the Winston Cup ranch here. Doing the same thing I've done all my life and enjoy it. Uh, yeah, but the question is, can you catch the leaders? Can you go for the win in this last 20 laps? Well, we'll see if we got enough car, you know. I'm out here driving my best ability, and, you know, if that ain't enough, we'll just have to go home and work out some more. But I think we've proven the fact already that we can run with the boys. Another team that's been working throughout this intermission is, is along with Gary Gerald. He can give us a story on that. Gary? Jack. This has been a tough one for Daryl Waltrip. He started third, finished 13th. There was a carburetor problem, I understand, Daryl. I don't know, something's wrong with the linkage, and it was hanging up on the air cleaner, I think, and we tried to fix it. I don't, it seems okay now, maybe we'll be all right, I don't know, but I was having to let off early and pull the throttle up with my foot. You wanted to change the carburetor, but they wouldn't allow you to do so, I understand. No, you know, I don't know, we changed, it's just a carburetor, it's a carburetor, it's a carburetor, but there's something wrong with the one on here, we wanted to change it, and they said, no way, so, once again, we're penalized, handicapped, whatever you want to call it. 
I'll tell you, and there's a frustrated driver sitting inside number 17. He's got to start 13th. But remember, this race is going to be twice as long as last year. So 10 more laps for him to try to go to work and get up there and chase the big money, Paul. And that inability to change some of the major equipment is one of the changes in format since last year. Race number two, the final run, 20 laps, $200,000 ready for the winner. We'll be back with more from Charlotte. Bristol, Tennessee, Allison was an unlikely contender, even more so after he tangled with Rob Moroso and dropped back. But rather than quit, Allison drew on the lessons of Father Bobby, a four-time Bristol winner, and fought his way back to the lead. On the final lap, Allison came under attack from the number six of Mark Martin. Off the final turn, Martin lunged, but Allison got there first, proving that die-hard chargers also win from the front, even if it's only by six inches. Sears Die Hard, more power when you need it most. Live at Charlotte, Paul Page with Benny Parsons, Bobby Unser, Gary Gerald, and Jack Aruth. Here are the earnings out of the first race with Earnhardt with $50,000 in his pocket right now. And the pole position and the shot to make a run for the $200,000. Let's go down to the pit road once again in Jack Aruth. And Paul, the driver that had a good view of the battle for the front is Mark Martin, who finished third. Mark, you had to tighten the car up a bit. It was a wee bit loose in that 50-lapper. Well, we've done a little work on it, and we just may have a shot at this thing. You know, these guys just, I can't say enough for this Folgers team. The cars they put under me are fantastic. Well, he's the man that finished in third position. The man that finished in the fourth spot is going to flank him on the outside when we get the command to refire engines. That's Kenny Schrader, and he has a brand-new crew chief. His regular crew chief, Richard Groom, is out. Your car owner is calling the shots today. Rick Hendrick, what has he told you? Uh, he just kept talking and talking. I finally had to turn the radio off. He was just talking the whole time. Can you do it, Kenny? Well, we geared up uh, to run 20 laps, 20 laps only, so we're going to give her a good shot. Well, that's what the story from the front two rows here is we're getting ready for the command to refire engines, Paul. There's Jeff Bodine. Fellow that had his problems in the qualifying and in the race itself. As the command is given to start engines now, we're ready to go. Jeff Bodine. We can see, Paul, just how warm it gets inside those cars. All the perspiration on Bodine's face. Not only the temperature, but he's hot under the collar, too. The furthest that anyone has come to win the Winston, sixth place. Lafonte did that back in 1988. That, of course, is where Dick Trickle will start right now. Three laps up to the green flag, three pace laps. Crowd again, quiet, watching for the moment. Each of them ready to cheer on their own champion. They're sitting down now, resting. It'll be up in just a second. As they roll away, it will be 19 cars. One that is missing, of course, is Rusty Wallace, the defending champion of the Winston. Like a 20 lap trophy. Wallace had his engine let go very early in the first 50 lap run. That first race was hot. 162 miles an hour, the average speed. They ran off the 50 laps in 27 minutes and 46 seconds with Bill Elliott chasing Dale Earnhardt right at the end. And in fact, the top five cars closing down on Earnhardt, but Earnhardt was able to hold them off. Benny? The cars start two abreast. Not single file, but two abreast. There is nine rows and one lone car in the rear. You take a look back through here. The pole sitter has never won the race. That's quite an astounding feat. And you know what? No driver has ever duplicated. He's never won two Winston's. Only one. Earnhardt, Bill Elliott, both these guys could be duplicate winners if either of those could win. Johnson's won twice as an owner. I don't think Earnhardt really believes that pole winner's not going to win it because he's really hooked up. Well, he's had a great year thus far and certainly a wonderful run in that first race. But he's got some serious talent as you take a look back from the pace car. There is the uh, Thunderbird, Bill Elliott. And you know, Paul, when you come down for the start, Bill Elliott's got to be thinking that his only really good chance of winning this race is not by Earnhardt making a mistake. It's going to be to outdo him at the start. Now, Earnhardt's hard to start with as we saw the last time. So let's see what they do this time. The advantage that Earnhardt has is he starts the race. He's the leader of the race, and under NASCAR rules, he's the fellow that gets to hit the accelerator first. What Earnhardt will do is come down to the line very, very slow. 
and nailed the thing in second gear. He's probably got a real low second gear and tried to beat Earnhardt. They move on to the back stretch now. Bill Elliott to the outside, Earnhardt to the inside. We take a look at the way they line up for this, the second and final race. Earnhardt Elliott the front row. Mark Martin and Kenny Schrader make up row number two. The third row is Alan Kowicki and Dick Frickle. Baby Allison and Harry Gant are the fourth row. The fifth row is Morgan Shepard and Bobby Hillen. Ricky Rudd and Lake Speed are in the sixth row. The seventh row, Darrell Waltrip, Terry Labonte. The eighth row is Bill Parsons and Jeff Bodine. The ninth row, Kyle Petty and Derek Koch. And just Brent Bodine alone because of Rusty Wallace's retirement in the tenth row. Bobby, how far back do you think somebody can win the race? Not very far back today because Earnhardt is just too hot. Elliott's obviously very fast, so it's not going to come from back very far unless, Benny, something happens like some form of a bumping or some sort of an accident up in front. Well, Bobby Unser, I'd like you to remind you of the exploits of Dick Trickle during that run. If he can duplicate that, then he's going to be way out in front. And there are 19 of the best in the sport. Now working on to the pace lap. It will be 20 laps to go. $200,000 at the end of the road. And this is where the tension begins to get not only to the crowd, but the drivers and crews themselves. As Benny Parsons said back at the start of this run, this is the thing that will change a personality in a man. Well, this is what all these people have been here since really early this morning for. Is this race, this 20 laps, this shootout, the whole works right here. You know, these 19 guys we're looking at, they're nice guys. They really are nice human beings. But they're not going to be too nice for the next 10 or 15 minutes. They're going to be monsters. All that rubber you see going up in front of the camera, incidentally, is the, from the tires. They pick up the old rubbers. They go around. All right, the pace car maneuvers toward three as Earnhardt, just as suggested, begins to lapse back just a bit. He wants to set his very own pace. As they come to the green flag, he wants his engine right at the top of a gear, doesn't he, Benny, so he can nail the throttle and slam forward. Exactly. See, he's going to lay back behind Bill. Bill, you need to get back by him because all of a sudden he's going to drive by. See, there he goes. Green flag comes out as Earnhardt pulls away. And Trickle gives Schrader a little help going into the first corner. And Mark Martin moves up into second place as Elliott Bay. as Earnhardt now in the third corner heading for four Mark Martin right in behind him then Kowicki then Schrader across the stripe Earnhardt continues his dominant position look Mark Martin Polk tried to go on the outside of Earnhardt you know Martin earlier in the race the 50 lap segment was very good those first few laps I think his car's going to be good the first few laps here as well. And Martin seems satisfied with what changes they were able to make during the interlude. Might have helped. Elliott now comes up to challenge Schrader as the leader is still Earnhardt. Remember now, all these guys were able to adjust their car in just a little bit, Paul. With Elliott having the problem at the start, it's really mixed it up right behind there. So they're ready to put the pressure on Earnhardt. Two laps are complete. A 20 lap dash for the cash. On the back stretch now, it is still Earnhardt. Bill Elliott tries to battle his way through. Dick Trickle is lined up in sixth place behind Elliott. Earnhardt leads them again off of the fourth corner, down through the double dog leg and across the line. He's actually pulling away just a little bit from Mark Martin. Not two car lanes that left. Well, run that will change the personality as everyone is battling for major prestige and big dollars. But Earnhardt is holding the lead position chased by Martin. Bill Elliott closes right in on the back buffer of Ken Schrader. Schrader's on the inside of Kowicki. Caution flag is out. Yellow flag comes out here. The laps under yellow will not count. They'll have to come around and pick up the pace car. The laps under yellow will not count as Martin made a strong charge on Earnhardt as they came to the line. So they want to make sure that this course is perfectly clean. They're sending the crews out to 
because apparently NASCAR has noted some oil dropped on the track. And when you have this much on the line, they don't want to take any chances at all. So Dale Earnhardt leads the field around under yellow. Four laps are complete, and the yellow flag laps do not count. Let's go to Jack Aroot. I'm with Mike Beam, who calls the shots in the Elliott Coors Melling Pit. Mike, what happened on that start? What did Bill say? Well, I think he got sniffed there a little bit, but, you know, he's been complaining about not taking off, you know, on a restart. You know, he got way low on RPMs, and, you know, he just didn't take off. But, but the tower up there, they hollered down here to tell us to tell him to make sure he jumped. And when I said that, you know, I'm sure he didn't want to jump, you know. And uh, so he eased up, and Earnhardt took off. So, you know, it's the same old boy, you know what I mean? It's the kind of year we're having. What are you going to do? They have not had a good year, and they were hoping to turn it around here in the Winston, and he's going to have his hands full now this afternoon to get back up and challenge for the lead. Paul? Well, the safety crews are working down in between the first and second turn down low in the groove, trying to clean the track up. None of the yellow flag laps count. Only four laps are complete. You know, we saw Dale Earnhardt get the best of Bill Elliott on that start. But, Paul, he can't do that to Mark Martin, who's in second spot because it is a single file start. And Mark Martin, as soon as he sees that three-car jump, he's going to jump as well. I need the rhythm coming back to any restart. It's absolutely critical. You begin thinking about it almost a full lap ahead, don't you? Mark Martin right now, right now is thinking, how can I stay on the back bumper of that black three? And you know, and you know what he's going to try to do if he has any choice? He's going to lay back just about a car length and try to be able to get into that carburetor just a tick before Dale does and get a run in him. They'll work another lap under the yellow. Gary Gerald is in Mark Martin's pit. Well, Paul Jack Roush owns, of course, the team. That was a terrific start for you and your club. Now, what kind of changes did you make, and does this yellow work at all to your advantage or disadvantage? Well, the yellow doesn't work to our advantage because we believe that our car will be best for the longest possible, uh, fastest possible pace. Uh, Mark had a great start that time. We talked about that. Earnhardt can be counted on to, to start early, so we uh, planned to go early, and, uh, and we went with him. That worked out really great. Any butterflies, Jack? A little bit. Uh, we've never really had a chance to race where we could say, well, if you, if you hurt your car or if you didn't finish, that uh, it wouldn't hurt the point situation. So this is fun to just be able to throw it on the air and go for it. That's what we're doing. All right, let's go to Jack Aru. And Gary, I'm with Richard Childress, the car owner with Dale Earnhardt's car. Did he maybe show his hand on that re on that one start? Does he have anything left that he can do now to Mark Martin? Well, he, he just said the chassis was better now than it was a while ago. We're a little too tight. We just have to see. These cars really change a lot after 10, 12 laps of the tires. Hey, you're an old race driver. You kind of liked that start, though, didn't you? Yeah, that was one of those, uh, you know, you learn on dirt tracks and stuff. Paul, let's take it back upstairs where we can take a look at that restart. Well, they talk about how good Earnhardt came back. He dropped back. Benny Parsons noted that he was doing that. He got himself exactly where he wanted in the RPMs and the gearing, while at the same time, Elliott was just in exactly the wrong place, and that was what the start of this run looked like four green flag laps ago. We are still under yellow as they continue to try to clean up the uh, track between turn one and two. By the way, NASCAR today announced that they're going to make the restrictor plate a little bit smaller yet for Daytona and Talladega. They're taking it down another 30 seconds to 29 30 seconds. And Benny, they think that that's going to take about uh, 27 horsepower away, maybe three or four miles an hour. Probably three, four miles an hour. Last race at Talladega, the cars ran a little bit over 200 miles an hour. NASCAR said that's too fast. We want to race at Daytona Talladega somewhere in the 190 to 95 mile an hour speed. No restrictor plates here. We're racing at Charlotte. A tremendous week of activities here. One of the best promoters in the business, Humpy Wheeler, Ruth Smith. Boy, they do a marvelous job. Just a beautiful racetrack all the way around. Grandstands are beautiful. A lot of people. Good parking areas. There you're taking a look from the Speedway Club. Have a little lunch while you watch the running of the Winston. I hope that isn't live. I hope those guys are, are not eating while this is going on because We're, we only got 16 laps to go, Paul. Anyway, we're expecting you to buy us dinner down there. $200,000 on the line. Maybe we can get the winner of this to buy for us. And it is Earnhardt that will lead the field down. The pace car already rolling onto the pit road. And again, Earnhardt picks his pace with Mark Martin lined up just behind. Doyle Ford gives him the green flag. Nice even start. And a good move by Elliott as he drops under the inside of Kowicki. 
You're on board with Elliott right now. Earnhardt maintains the lead going to the backside. Elliott runs in fourth place. And Bill Elliott wants to get to the front. He knows he looked a little bit silly on that start. He wants to get front to the front and see if he can make it up just a little bit. Yeah, he's got a little make up for it. That's Kenny Trader just in front of him running in third place. Martin closes down. Five laps are now in the record book. Fifteen to go. They cool their tires down during that yellow. Kenny yeah. Schrader makes a move on the inside of Martin. Schrader comes up to the inside. And takes over second for the moment. Elliott sitting right there behind. Earnhardt still the leader. Mark Martin stays on the high side. Dick Trickle comes in right behind the number nine car of Elliott. Oh, we've got a race on our hands here at Charlotte. Mark Trader continues to challenge Mark Martin. But Martin's trying to fight back. He's still on the outside, trying desperately to hold on to that second spot. Elliot now on the outside. Tires are nice and cool right now, Benny. They can go side by side like that, not burn their tires off. Tires are working really good, so the racing is better. Boy, look at him fight as Earnhardt continues to lead, and Schrader now takes over second place. That's trickle down on the inside of Kulwicki as he now begins to challenge alongside of Elliot. Cross the line again, seven laps are complete. 20 laps scheduled. 200,000 to the winner. Earnhardt is out in front. All that racing right in the back there. All those guys running side by side just gave Earnhardt about four more car lengths, Paul. Just what he's won. Thus far, every lap of the Winston has been led by Darryl, Dale Earnhardt. And the fight is for third place. Good fight for fifth as well. There's Trickle trying Kulwicki again. But all of this battling is giving the advantage to Earnhardt as he inches away from second place. Kenny Schrader, Trickle still battling with Kowicki. Bob Davey Allison trying to follow Dick Trickle by, but Alan Kowicki keeps fighting back. Back to the lead. Dale Earnhardt, the black tree, the leader, Ken Schrader. There's the back to Alan Kowicki, Dick Trickle, and Davey Allison. That fight is for fifth place. Kowicki has it right now. As the back end comes a little unglued on Trickle's car, Allison comes in. And Harry Gant brings the 33 into the battle as well. Allison's driving right by Trickle on the outside for a while there. In a hard place to pass. A contrast of lines here as Trickle's back end comes loose again. Boy, he's running that car loose. They're running absolutely as hard as they possibly can. Everyone out there. Benny, at this point, we'd be talking an entirely different setup than if they were going to run next week in the 600. Oh, these cars, they, if they use these cars, if they, if they use the engine up, who cares? Next week, that's a year down the road. Now that's I a halfway point, 10 laps to go. Now, like in 20 laps, Paul, it's really hard for them to hurt the tires, so they're going to use these tires as hard as they can. If they get a little bit of smoke coming off of them, hey, that's not going to bother them a bit. We're past the half. The annual running of the Winston. This is the second and final segment. Trickle is seven. Kenny Schrader closes up on Earnhardt. 11 laps complete. Nine laps to go. This white and green car, the 25 car, won the 500-mile racer, 500-mile racer last fall. You ever see Richard Childress watching intently? He knows that Schrader is a car to be reckoned with. And Schrader is right there. Mark Martin runs in third. Kenny Schrader, very, very versatile driver. Runs dirt tracks, he gets chip cars. Or excuse me, Jeff, dirt cars, just everything that there is. Stock cars is the newest thing to him. He's really moving the day. Eight laps to go. Earnhardt has led every lap thus far. Can he hold on for the remaining eight? Grader is right there to contest it. You ride with Elliott, who is in fourth, right behind Mark Martin. Let's not forget that luck is a critical factor in racing. Don't forget the Daytona 500. Boy, that's where Dale was going to the last lap. 
I was thinking the same thing because there is seven laps to go. You just watch the steering wheel and Dale's car. He's very smooth. That's the car on the racetrack where it should be. Earnhardt had his problems with this car during the first segment. Said the car was pushing. They made what changes they were allowed. And now hope that it's handling just a little bit better. On board with Elliott. Fourth place. Just ahead Martin and Schrader and Earnhardt. They're that close together. Bill Elliott, the number nine four. just a little bit. You see the smoke there on Earnhardt's car. They're all driving for all their work. Remember, these cars are all what we call qualifying trim. Nothing left as far as speed. Boy, look at the smoke pour off of that right rear. These things are trimmed out. You're right, Bobby. It's like a jet fighter. Very temperamental. Very sensitive. you got to drive these with your fingertips at this point. Looks like Earnhardt is pulled away by a car length or so. And right now, that's an eternity. One car length is an eternity. Look at all the smoke off Earnhardt. He's the only car that's smoking those tires that badly. Will those tires last, Benny? Well, I think they'll last. Sure, they'll last. Do the turn, the right rear smoking on Earnhardt. Off of number four, the white flag, the final lap. As we watch Earnhardt try to hold off Schrader. Let's watch. together one fast team oh look at that crowd they loved it what smooth driving they call him the dominator well there's why Earnhardt the first time anyone has won the Winston twice Dale Earnhardt does it the first time that anyone has won the race from the pole Dale Earnhardt does it afternoon worth three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars for Earnhardt also the first time anyone has led flag the flag in now the six runnings of the Winston. And boy, he's a happy man. 1986, Bill Elliott led all but the last lap. Earnhardt today goes all the way and picks up the win. The star of NASCAR's All-Stars, Dale Earnhardt.
We'll return with more of ABC Sports coverage of Oldsmobile Presents the Winston after this message and a word from our ABC station. Look out. Picks up the win. Earnhardt is the winner at the Winston. And he is a very rich man this afternoon. Chased to the line by Kenny Schrader, Mark Martin, Bill Elliott, and Davey Allison. Let's go down to winner's circle now in Jackaroo. Dale Earnhardt, you were the first two-timer. Congratulations. It feels good. Feels better than the first one, really. We, uh, the old car was so dominant. GM Goodrich and uh, Richard Tillers and all the guys, they did such a good, good job with the car. It's the car I won Darlington with, so we've tested her out. It's a good race car. Really feel good about it, and thank good Lord for a good, safe race. It was a good race for us. Um, the fans might not like the all excitement wasn't there, but it was exciting for me. Hey, tell me about the start. You really snookered the entire field, especially Elliott. Well, it was time to go. He had to uh, let out there like he wanted to have a lead on us when we restarted, and uh, I waited till it was time and went. They call him the man in black. They call him the intimidator. You are really having one whale of a season. This momentum, a win like this, does that carry on into next week and maybe all the way to a Winston Cup championship? I guarantee it does. It, we've uh, been pumped up since Daytona, even though we had that bad luck. But this guy, these guys are working hard, and we want to win. You know, I just like to you know, thank the good Lord. Uh, you know, the family did great. I mean, you know, I'm happy as I can be. This is one of the most happiest victory lanes I've ever been in. Paul, let's go back to you. Well, three times in the past, the winner at the Winston goes on to take the championship. Take a look at this for some money. $325,000 to Earnhardt. Trader with $82,000, $62,500 for Mark Martin. We'll be back with an update from the Indianapolis 500 right after this. Trader, who finishes second, sets on the left front fender. How much disappointment is there when you don't get the $200,000 in your pocket? Well, it'd be, it'd be a lot more if we didn't get the 82,000, but uh, well, I'll tell you, you know, we wanted it. Everybody out there wanted it, and we run, by, we run second to the black car, and the black car's tough, and uh, I think we got something for him in the long run, but uh, we didn't have nothing for him in 20 laps, so we're, we're leaving here happy, looking forward to coming back and running 600 miles. We wish you well. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you much. Let's check in again with Jack Roof. Well, Gary, the man that thought, at least when they dropped the green flag, he'd have a good shot at the victory is with me right now, Bill Elliott. Uh, kind of a tough start there. Well, I just on the restart, I was trying to hold a pace in the pace car, and Earnhardt dropped back, you know, and then he just took off whenever, you know, and I didn't know that you're supposed to do that, but that's the way. Well, now, hey, wait a minute. Now, you've started on the outside pole before. You know the pole leader actually brings the field down. Yeah, but normally you keep the speed of the pace car and you don't slow down. Normally that's what you're supposed to do. Well, that's what they always told me in the driver's meeting. But, you know, the car ran well, and it wasn't, you know, I was a little bit struggling on restarts anyway, even at the first part of the race. But the car ran good and worked good, and I'm looking forward to next week. Well, that's another chapter that can be written in the strange but true happenings here in Winston's. And some of the psychology of racing, Bobby Unzer, you really have to know how to get your way around this track, both with your foot and with your brain. Dale Earnhardt wins the Winston in $200,000. We'll be right back with the final word. Back at Charlotte, as you look out of the window of the Speedway Club, they're ready to serve dinner. One of those that will be entertained, no doubt, is Dale Earnhardt. He's got an additional $325,000 to help pick up the tab, Benny Parsons. You know, I misspoke earlier in the, in the broadcast. I said Mark Martin has only one victory in Winston Cup. That's incorrect. It's two victories. Bobby Unzer, you love coming to the Winston. Hey, when you're hot, you're hot. You know, Earnhardt and crew has really got all the other teams scratching their heads, and it's really got them upset. So our hat is off to Dale Earnhardt and crew. Well, twice he's been with us here live on ABC. Atlanta is here. Both times he's won. And we will keep an eye on him throughout the remainder of this Winston Cup season. Once again, three times the Winston has predicted the ultimate champion in the NASCAR season. So Earnhardt, well now they go for photographs and it feels a whole lot better than it did back at Daytona. A very rich man this afternoon. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Jeffrey Mason. Oldsmobile Presents the Winston was produced by Ned Simon. Directed by Bob Goodrich. Technical director, Gary Rothman. Associate producers, Bruce Clark and Patty Wheeler. Associate directors, Bruce, Vince Daddario and Norm Sam. Dale Earnhardt 
wins here one week from today. It's the 74th running of the Indianapolis 500 on a major motorsports afternoon. We'll see you there.